to see convolution property using Z transform. It states there are two signals. If x1 n has z transform x1 z with ROC R1, and x2 n whose z transform is x to z and ROC is R2 then if you convert x1 n with x2 n and if you are taking a z transform of it the z transform of convolution of x1 and x2 is multiplication of their transfer function in z domain and we will get a resultant ROC as intersection of R1 and R2. So thing is that z transform of a convolution is nothing but a multiplication of transfer function in z domain for individual signal so this is a property let's prove it since we know convolution of two signals x1 n convol x2 n is nothing but summation k varies from minus infinity to infinity x1 k into x2 n minus k so this is nothing but a definition of convolution Z transform of this convolution. So Z transform of X1 n convol with X2 n is nothing but summation n varies from minus infinity to infinity. We have to take a whole signal which is nothing but summation of k from minus infinity to infinity x of k into x2 of n minus k this is a signal and to get a z transform this need to be multiplied with z raised to minus n so this is a definition of z transform Now we have to smartly select the summation and a signal from these two summations. So what we will do, we will take summation k varies from minus infinity to infinity x of k separately with respect to another summation which is n minus infinity to infinity x2 of n minus k into z raised to minus n. Here we will change the index meaning if you put n minus k with some variable m 
this implies n is nothing but k plus m and n minus k is m so there won't be any change as far as the limits are concerned so here i can say despite of changing the index m varies from minus infinity to infinity so let's make this changes so we will get z transform of x1 n convolved with x2 n will get summation k varies from minus infinity to infinity x1 k and by changing the index we will get a new variable m where is from minus infinity to infinity x to f m into z raised to minus n is nothing but k plus m so we will get this expression ultimately if we simplify this we will get summation k where is from minus infinity to infinity x1 k into z raised to minus k summation m varies from minus infinity to infinity x2 of m z raised to minus m so what we have done this we have split it into two z raised to minus k and z raised to minus m now if you see carefully these two are nothing but definitions of z transform here the signal is x1 here the signal is x2 so i can say this is nothing but x1 z multiplied by x2 of z so z transform of convolution of x1 n with x2 n is nothing but x1 z into x2 of z so this is a proof of convolution let's solve a simple example to illustrate the property so here we have taken x1 n as 1 2 minus 1 and 3 as the signal and x to n is another signal with a value minus 1 2 2 and by default the origin is at the first element so by definition z transform of x1 n will be summation n from minus infinity to infinity x1 n into z raised to minus n what you are supposed to find out you are supposed to find out a z transform of convolution x1 n and x2 n so we know the property what we have to get we have to get an individual z transform and then simply we need to multiply to get a z transform of convolution of these two signals so by definition this will be the z transform since it is starting from a 0 1 2 3 only three indices are there so we can say it's a 1 into z to 0 plus 2 into z to minus 1 minus 1 into z raised to minus 2 plus 3 into z raised to minus 3 so if you simplify this we will get 1 plus 2 z inverse minus z raised to minus 2 plus 3 z raised to minus 3 as x1 z 
which is nothing but convolution of x1 n now let's find out a z transform of second signal so once again by definition z transform of x to n is nothing but summation n varies from minus infinity to infinity x to n into z raised to minus n so once again for the second signal starting from n equal to 0 and go up to n equal to 2 so we will have minus 1 into z raised to 0 plus 2 into z raised to minus 1 plus 2 into z raised to minus 2 and simplification will give us minus 1 plus 2z inverse plus 2z raised to minus 2 as x2z second equation so if you multiply 1 and 2 we will get x1z into x2z nothing but 1 plus 2z inverse minus z raised to minus 2 plus 3z raised to minus 3 multiplied by minus 1 plus 2z inverse plus 2z raised to minus 2 and when we need to just simplify this so that it will be a minus 1 plus 2z inverse plus 2z raised to minus 2 plus 2z inverse into minus 1 plus 4z raised to minus 2 plus 4z raised to minus 3 minus minus will become plus so z raised to minus 2 minus 2z raised to minus 3 minus 2z raised to minus 4 minus 3z raised to minus 3 plus 6z raised to minus 4 plus 6z raised to minus 5 so let's club like terms so the here it's a constant is it 2z inverse here minus 2z inverse will get cancelled then we are having over here 2z raised to minus 2 4z raised to minus 2 that becomes 6 here one more z raised to minus 2 is present so that becomes 7 so let's write it so x1z into x2z we will get as minus 1 plus 7 z raised to minus 2 then let's club z raised to minus 3 it's a 4 4 minus 2 is 2 2 minus 3 is 1 so it's plus z raised to minus 3 let's club z raised to minus 4 so here minus 2 here 6 minus 2 plus 6 is 4 so it's a plus 4 z raised to minus 4 and finally z raised to minus 5 is only one term plus 6 z raised to minus 5 so by the convolution property this left hand side is nothing but z transform of x1n convolve with x2n and we are getting our answer as minus 1 plus 7 z raised to minus 2 plus z raised to minus 3 plus 4 z raised to minus 4 plus 6 z raised to minus 5 so we are getting a convolution z transform like this so this is our answer but we can go one step ahead and by using inverse z transform 
basically we are just using the definition of z transform and comparing so that we can get a convolution as see it's a minus 1 basically it's a minus 1 z rest to 0 so it's the first element so we are getting here is minus 1 and origin is over here then here's a 7 but z rest to minus 2 that means it's a third element rather if we starting our index from 0 that means z inverse is missing so that is 0 then here it's a coefficient 7 likewise 1 4 and 6 so basically we are getting a convolution like this which we can verify with a tabular method as well so let's quickly verify this so what we are having here x1n so x1n i'll write over here rather i'll write x1n which is 1 2 minus 1 3 and I'll write x to n over here, which is minus 1, 2, and 2. So it's minus 1, minus 2, 1, minus 3, 2, 4, minus 2, 6, 2, 4, minus 2, and 6. And as we know, tabular method. We form a table like this and we are taking these diagonals so in the end it will form a table like this and what we are doing over here we are taking the elements one by one in addition manner so basically through tabular method what answer we are getting First element is a minus 1, 2 minus 2, so it's a 0, then 2 plus 4 plus 1, 7, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, here 4 and here 6. So we need to check over here the coefficient of z is to minus 3. So z is to minus 3 over here is 4 minus 2 is 2 and 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So yes, it has to be a minus 1 over here. So minus 1. Yeah, it has to be a minus 1. So basically we are getting minus 1, 0, 7, minus 1, 4 and 6 and which is matching with this. Let's check the origin x1 x1n has the origin at this point x2n having the origin over here and these two origins coincide at the first element so obviously here we are having a origin of our convolution so thing is that through tabular method whatever answer we are getting is matching with a z transform so the biggest advantage of a z transform is we can use a z transform of individual signals and we just multiply and after multiplication whatever the x of z we are getting or a function in z we are getting we have to just take an inverse z transform of it to get an answer which is nothing but convolution sum of two signals so this is a powerful tool while solving a convolution problem thank you